This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. There's an old story that a certain man was arriving at the gates of heaven and asking for admission. Where are you from? asked St. Peter. The man replied, I'm from Texas. Well, St. Peter said, you can come on in, but you won't like it. And in the living of my life through the years, I've met men and women like that who found religion or who have come into the kingdom of God, so they claim, but they look like they really don't like it. They're sour, somber, cheerless, almost lifeless, and yet that is not the religion and the teaching of Jesus of Nazareth. Because he taught, be of good cheer, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I have come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. He was a joyous individual. And joy ran over at the brim of his soul and his life and into the lives of others. So may it be with you. Dr. Charles T. Bingham has written, Worry, Fear, and Anger are the greatest disease causers. But if we had perfect faith, then we wouldn't worry because faith is the great healer. It's true. Have faith in God. Trust your life to God without fear, worry, and anxiety. Jesus said, be not anxious, fear not. Then no matter what happens, maintain that serenity and that equipoise. True story. This happened in Chicago. At a crowded intersection, while waiting for the light to change, there was a car that became stalled. So it was holding up a line of other vehicles behind it. Now, the man who was driving the car was obviously flustered. He got out, lifted up the hood of the engine to investigate, to try to find out what was wrong. As he did so, the driver of the car immediately behind his car began incessantly honking on his horn. And this noise kept up without any let-up until suddenly the driver of the stalled car, still meeting with no success in his attempt to discover the trouble, suddenly straightened up and he spoke to this impatient motorist behind him and said, You know, if you'll come over here and fix my car... I'll be glad to go over to your car and keep blowing your horn for you. It's so easy to sit and just honk your horn in complaint without doing anything positive. The world is full of critics who can tell you everything that's wrong with anything, but the great need of this hour is for people who will do something besides just talk about, criticize, complain. People with the courage to act upon their faith and upon their principles, to do something positive. God has a plan for this planet, and you're part of it. God has a will for your life, and you can be part of that, to carry it out in your daily life. If you will pray the prayer and really mean it, God, it is my will that your will be done. And that feels right. Then you have aligned and synchronized your mind, your soul, your power, your purposes with the mind, purposes, and power of the very God who created all that is and who has given a fragment of his spirit to indwell your mind, who has purposes for you, who loves you with a love which will not let you go no matter what you do, who cares about you, has forgiveness, mercy, and newness of life for you. Fear not. Be not anxious. Don't worry about tomorrow. On the desk of one successful businessman I know, there's a tiny card which reads, Go as far as you can see, and when you get there, you'll be able to see farther. By faith, live your life every day as a son or daughter of God, right here and now in the moment, and your future will be guided by the Spirit of God within. Have no worry, fear, or anxiety about your future. Commit your future to the hands of God, your entire life to the hand of God. Personal growth is a part of personal progress. Recently, the Association of Ohio Chiropodists reported that women's feet now average a full size larger than 25 years ago. It's also a medical fact that the height of each new generation is taller than the previous it's recently been noted that Western human beings of today have become more broad than in earlier days. It is now impossible for most modern men and women to sit down in ancient chairs which fit the early Romans perfectly well. It is true that in many respects humanity is outgrowing the past. But one thing which we will never outgrow, despite the fact we outgrow our clothes, our shoes, and our chairs, we will never outgrow the truth, because truth does not wither and die with the passage of time. 
It lives, it bears fruit. And the truths of the centuries are not to be outdated. They are true today as ever. You're a child of God. God loves you. God is real. God has power for your life. Truth and beauty and goodness, these things are not here today and gone tomorrow. They are divine realities. They are of God. You may rely upon these things, and ultimately you may trust your very life, your soul, your being, all you are and all you hope to be and become to God who is your Father and who loves you with a love so incalculable you can only begin in this life to fathom the height of it and the depth of it. And finding this is a source of never-ending joy. For some people, happiness fluctuates, like the stock market. If the market is up, they're happy. If it's down, they're morose and uneasy. Their happiness is dependent upon something over which they have no control. It comes from without. But the joy of the spiritual life comes from inside. And no matter what the stock market does, up or down, the spiritual person has a deeper joy because his or her life and interests and purposes and concerns are founded on something deeper and eternally lasting, love for God and love for others. The two great commandments, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. We need love. Every person does. Doctors and psychologists have discovered that a baby can die from lack of love, even though he or she may be well-fed and physically healthy. But there's an intrinsic human need to have love in one's life. God cares for you. God loves you. Love God in return and love everyone you encounter. Knowing God is an incredible, astonishing, total, consuming experience. There's nothing merely theoretical about knowing God. It catches up your whole being, your mind, your heart, your emotions. You can't really be objective about it any more than a parent can be objective about the birth of a child or a husband to be objective about the love of his wife because these things are so meaningful and so is your relationship with God, or it can be. It can become such. It can mean so much that it transforms your life in a way you never would have imagined or conceived possible so that no matter what difficulties or vicissitudes overtake you, there is still that strong and pulsing, alive and vital relationship with God. There's a story that years ago, the author, William Dean Howells, and the famous novelist Mark Twain were coming out of a cafe one morning, and it commenced to rain very heavily. Huge downpour, mud puddles, lightning, thunder, storm. William Dean Howells turned to Mark Twain and said, Do you think it'll ever stop? Mark Twain replied, it always has. It is truly important to know, to realize, that beyond the momentary unpleasantness and tribulations of life, beyond these things are God's unchanging principles and laws of the universe, and God's changeless love and mercy, and his forgiveness and newness. The rain storms have always stopped, and the sun has always risen once again, and you can count on these things. For these are the principles of God. And you can count on God's truth and God's love. God will always be there for you. May you always be there for God. One patient was talking to a psychiatrist and said, I'd like to go give my brain a bath. Practically everybody feels that way at times. But if you will pour yourself out to God, confess your life to God, and ask God to make you new, God will cleanse you, God will transform you and fill your life with love and with joy. That for which you were created, at last it'll feel right to you. Life will, existence will, rising to meet the dawn light and going to bed every night. And everything in between will begin to feel right. You'll know you're part of a larger cause than your own, a greater purpose than any you could conceive, for you will have given your life and your will to God, and all things will begin to become new. Professor Josiah Royce, the philosopher, writing about a philosophy of loyalty, said, there's only one way to be a truly ethical individual, and that is to choose your cause and then to serve it. End of quote. Soren Kierkegaard wrote Purity of Heart 
is to will one thing. Give your life to God. Then go forward with God, willing above all the will of God to the living of your life. People who try to be free through non-discipline and non-commitment are only free in the sense that a ship is free when it's lost both compass and rudder. They are free to be in chaos. But to be really free is to submit yourself completely to God. The undisciplined person may sit at a piano, said Dr. Elton Trueblood, but he is not free to strike the notes as he would like to. He is not free because he has not paid the necessary price for that particular freedom. End of quote. Freedom is the byproduct of a committed life. Let God discipline and order and direct the days of your life, and it will be satisfying and it will be good, for you will have found your real ultimate purpose in being alive, which is to find and know God and love God and love others. That's it. Really, that's it. And give your life and your will to God and live your life and your days in praise, happiness, joy, and worship of God. What an awful thing to be happy and have no one to thank. But you have someone to thank God. Thank God every day. Rise every morning and say, This is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And go out and have yourself a time loving God, loving others, doing all the good you can to all the people you can and all the ways you can for as long as you can, and committing it all to God. For God is your Father, and you are a son or daughter of your Heavenly Father Rejoice, and again I say rejoice, in the knowledge of that truth. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written pieces of literature on finding God, getting to know God, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, and the brotherhood of man. They're all in a booklet titled, Growing Spiritually. And it's yours without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. We also have one titled, Life After Death. What happens when you die and what happens afterward? Write for this. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.